Hello and welcome to the first sneak peek at Lucid, which is an app that I'm developing which will be easy to install and it includes a Solana test validator and all the features that that provides. But since in a lot of cases when you're developing, you want to be able to save, load and restore account states and maybe you want to restart the validator all while you're testing and so on, uh, Lucid includes a lot of other features and we're going to show some of those uh, today. So here we got Lucid running. We see the dashboard configuration uh, of the validator. Now it's, it started basically when I, when I launched uh, Lucid. And here we can see that it's actually ticking. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to walk through the features that this prototype of Lucid currently has. And we're going to use a sample developer that is developing a front end for an app that already exists on DevNet. That developer does not write the contract. Basically, he just wants to run scripts against the contract to understand how it works. Now, the developer could do that against DevNet, but he chose to use a Lucid because he wants faster turnaround time and also get the superpowers that Lucid provides. So let's look at our transactions tab. We got nothing in here yet. So let's try uh, to post something. So this is a, a script that the developer already prepared, and he now thinks that he can run this against Lucid. And one of the transactions actually goes through, and that is the airdrop. So obviously, in order to do anything on Solana, you need some soul. So this was uh, to drop soul to the poster of this post, so or the tweet. Now, um, but we can see that actually something bad happened over here, and it says that the program that the developers actually trying to work against does not exist. So what can we do? That brings us to the first feature of Lucid. So we can actually clone accounts into Lucid from DevNet or anywhere else. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first example that we're going to do, so right now we got, um, this is basically the account on, on uh, this is the local validator. And we can see that the account does not exist yet. It's actually this account. So let's actually show that this does not exist yet. Does not exist, but it does exist on DevNet. So what we can actually do is just paste that in here and uh, Lucid finds it on DevNet and we can just clone it into our validator. Now we can go back to the local validator here on the Explorer to show that this is actually now there. And we can also look at how managing accounts and um, show that the account is actually there. And we can even look at the data. Now, the data here is not is only raw data because we don't have the IDL for the program of this uh, account yet. And we can also see that there's no anchor data showing in our local validator, while here we actually have the anchor data. And also, we want to run uh, scripts against our program, so we actually need that program. So let's actually go ahead and clone that program. Now, when I, when I clone the program, it not only clones uh, the program and the executable data, but it also found the IDL and cloned that into our validator as well. And we can kind of show that because now if we refresh that same account again, now we can see that the Explorer actually found the anchor data because it now found the IDL and it could show that. So we are ready to go. And now we go back to our terminal and just run that same request again. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention about cloning first is that you can actually do that also f programmatically. So in your tests, you could say, I want to clone this account from DevNet, or you could even when the validator starts up, configure it in a way where it already has a program in it, or you could uh, you know, load any account into it that uh, you, you've saved and we look at how to save accounts in a second. But let's look at the transaction now. So here we got uh, the transaction. This is again an airdrop. This is the actual account post transaction. And this is the account that actually uh, contains the post now. So we can look at this. There was no account that didn't exist before the transaction, right? This is a new account now. And we can go ahead and inspect the account data though. As we can see, uh, you know, we posted hello world, it's raw, but it's nicer to look at it in a parsed fashion. And we can see here that we have a new account with Hello World, uh, no edits yet. Okay, so that is nice. Um, but 
And what we can do now, we can actually update the account. But before we do that, let's show another feature. So here we can see that this account now exists in our validator, Tower World. And what we can do, we can say, you know what, I want to, you know, not keep running this transaction to prepare this account. I actually want to create a snapshot. So let's create a snapshot and say um, post only. Okay, and then we say we only posted to the account but did not update it yet. All right, so we create the snapshot, it's successfully created. And you can see I got a bunch of other snapshots already, which we can easily remove as well if we want to. But this is a snapshot that we just created. And we can see uh, what's actually in there, it's Hello World, and we'll save that for later. Now we go back to transactions, and now we can actually go ahead and update this, this account. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're going to say yarn update, and these are scripts that that developer already prepared. In this case, me. Um, this means I'm updating. Uh, this is the poster number one, and I'm updating to this account, and I'm going to say all uh, window. Okay. Now I'm going to update this. You're going to see a trans two transactions coming, and it always airdrops. Just to be sure, it's good to have uh, soul. Now, if we go here and we look now at the account, now we can see that the account actually did exist before this transaction and after this transaction. And the account data actually changed. And we can now look at the diff and in raw, it kind of looks nice. Uh, we can actually see the hello world went from Hola Mundo. But again, in parsed manner, it's much nicer. And here we got a summary of all the properties that changed. And below that, we have the, the state of the actual uh, accounts, right? Uh, so before, it also had zero edits and now has one edit. Now what we can do, we can actually go ahead and um, restore our snapshot. Okay, so here's our snapshot. All right, and as you can see, obviously it's still uh, as we snapshot it before, and we can now restore. But let's first add, uh, look at the explorer to make sure that um, we actually have this account there with the current data, so you know that. This is not just Lucid showing it, but this is actually inside the validator. So we can see now here that we got all our mundo with one edit. Now let's go ahead and restore the snapshot. Snapshots restored, let's just refresh here again. And now we're back to hello world zero. And again, this was so fast, this was not a real transaction. This is faster than a transaction, but in order to help you out, Lucid actually shows it like a transaction. But you can see there are zero instructions here which is really not possible, but uh, and it shows as a restore transaction. Also, it shows here as a program Lucid Snapshot Restore to make it really obvious that uh, you restore the snapshot. Now, all these transactions before that are kind of like invalidated now because we actually changed the account data like that. So it's some of the account data that was you know changed with this transaction might not be the way it should be. But this is uh, for testing purposes, right? Um, and also, I want to mention that you can restore the snapshot programmatically. So in your test, right, you run one transaction, it takes a long time, or maybe it's actually multiple that you need to run. And But now you can actually say, okay, I want to uh, save the snapshot here, and I want to run a bunch of tests, and they don't need to all rerun these transactions to get to the same state. You can actually then, in the test, say, oh, go back to this, and it's super fast, and, and then you can run your tests. Uh, this is also useful if you want to obviously play with the UI and kind of, you know, you're working on one feature and you want to go back to this uh, one state all the time. Now, let's look at the account data to prove that we actually changed it back. We can see it was Ola Mundo and now it's Hello World. And we can see that we went from one edit to zero, which is really not possible, but with Lucid, it is. So now um, let's actually uh, create a few more transactions just to show. Um, you know that this works actually properly. So if you go back and we uh, say in German, hello, right, right. And now we get two transactions and we can see that this account is now fully functional as, as it should be. And it basically just started out from, from whatever we, we set it to in the snapshot and everything still works as, as expected, right? Um, and let's do another one, um, let's say, hi planet, now we got another one, and we can see that it now went from um, Hello World to High Plant, and it has two edits now. And just to have fun, right, let's just reset this again. Here we go, restore it. Okay, now we restored it with the snapshot restored. 
and uh, we can expect the Chaldea now. We can see that it went from high planet to hello world. Okay, so now, um, and this is kind of nice, now we can actually go through here, right? We went from hello world, which was the first post, uh, which then we updated to Ola Mundo, then we restored it back to hello world, we updated to hello world, then we updated to high planet, and then finally we reset it back. Now, obviously, um, you know, you might want to like save the snapshot, as I said, and then update it whenever you, uh, whenever you start the, the validator, you kind of want to get into the state, right? So you can, let's just do that. We can actually stop the validator. Now there are no transactions. The validator is actually stopped, right? And um, we can now restart the validator and I'm going to show that the, the, the account can actually be restored again, even though the validator was restarted or even if we restart Lucid altogether. So let's wait a little bit for the validator to come back up. Okay, now it's running over here, right? So now if you go here to our snapshot, and we have no transactions still, right? If you go here, snapshots, and we select this account to restore. Restore it, restore it. We have a transaction here, right? We can see um, that this account went from nothing, right? Because it didn't exist before. And right now, since we don't have the IDL, Right. Uh, since we restart the validator, that program is not loaded. It shows against the raw data. And finally, let's just show that it is really here. Right. And uh, and again, we have no IDL, but it is actually here. Right. And that's it. And I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to keep working on this project and hopefully make every Solana developer more productive. One last thing I want to mention, if you are a developer also writing smart contracts, Lucid will be workspace aware, which means that it will basically watch as you compile your programs and will automatically reload these programs into the validator. So you don't need to restart a validator in order to see uh, changes uh, that you made to your smart contracts taking effect. And um, obviously the IDL will be updated and all these things. So you can just like have a really productive way of developing on Solana with a super fast feedback loop. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.